to worship. But you, because you already acknowledge God, as you're aware, uh, the Islamic requirement is to pray five times a day. It's incumbent. That's right. My son does that. Excellent. Now, is your, is your uh, like husband or partner from Kenya? or My ex-partner. Your ex-partner. from Uganda. Interesting. Now, in addition to this, the methodology that we pray is not so much a dis discontinuation from the message from the Old Testament and the New Testament from the Christians and the Jews. You're an English lady, yes? You've been born and brought up over here. So you haven't really understood, or maybe you've heard normally speaking about the Christian faith, about, you know, um, who... Church of England, I was christened as a child. Inter did you attend uh, Bible classes or did you attend... Only when I was little. Only when you were little. Yeah. So what the Islamic relentless theme of the message is, God is unlike his creation. So God is neither a man, nor a woman, nor an idol, nor a statue, beyond the creation. Now, Christians, unfortunately, made their major protagonist, Jesus Christ, to be akin to being God as well. When the man made no such claim. Fantastic. Right. Now, we pray five times a day, as you're aware, but that's something which is also the, the, the purpose of the prayer of the prophets as well. They prayed five times a day, like the, well, three times a day, in the same way that we do. But you, but you weren't taught this as, children, as, as young people, that we bow first before God, as you will have observed from your sons, and then we kneel in prostration. That's also something that how Moses would pray as well. You know when we do a little wash, we do a hand wash? We'll do. Excellent, you're familiar. This is how something that even Moses would pray like that. He'd wash his hands and finish by washing his feet before offering congregational prayers. See, I know not to be speaking to my son when he's doing what we'll do. Fantastic. Because, okay. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be, isn't it? You don't even talk. Yeah, because you're because you're dedicating an aspect of a ritual to God. Which which mosque are you affiliated with? So I'm not from around here, we're from like further up in East London. But we do have a mosque. Where in East London. Wolfham Forest? Because my son goes found one at E1, started to go to that one. Is that the one at East London Mosque? Yes. Yeah, that's a very popular mosque. He started to go to that it was next to his college. Fabulous. But I just want to I just want you to have a resonation as to why it could be appropriate for you as well. Because you already believe in God. This is my friend who became Muslim six weeks ago. In fact, in E1, outside Whitechapel Station. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, in, in effect, so what we, what we invite people to is that God is worthy of worship. He, he, we have a responsibility to Him. He's given us everything for free. You've got two nice eyes. If I was to ask you for 50 million quid for both of your eyes and you would go blind for the rest of your life, you'd say, on your bike, no chance. So what we say is that he's given it to us for free, yeah. priceless. The air that we breathe. Did you know the air that we breathe is 78% nitrogen? If there was a quarter percent less, it would not be conducive to living. We would not be able to. So therefore, that creator has given us everything. When we're hungry or we're first, say it's a warm day, look, we got ultra at hand. We're going to get thirsty, well, thirst is quenched. We should be grateful. So what we say then is that that relationship that we have, that five times daily offering is incumbent as ordained by the creator for our betterment, to acknowledge him. And by this very method, these exterior actions then should make us better individuals in, in, in an exemplified way. So what we do, so whatever God has forbidden for us, we resist from. Whatever he has ordained upon us, we, come, we, we do as such. So Islam is a very holistic religion in the sense that it really seeks to better you in every single way, which even, being fair, other religions do as well. However, what its uniqueness is, it's a continuation of the previous revelations from the Old Testament for Moses, the New Testament for Jesus, and the final testament, the Quran. A revelation for all of mankind that you worship God according to God's will. We are all going to perish one day. Of that there is no doubt. Two things certain in life, death and taxes. Okay, Un unavoidable. So death will come to us all. So when death comes, then we're going to be six foot under, we are no more. Then, as we have a belief, that we will be resurrected in the hereafter. A day of judgment, where God will judge us for all our actions. And then we'd have either an eternal abode, which will be bliss, or it will be somewhat destitution. So what we do then, hence, is we make preparation. This is like the, the driving test. So, so you can see some themes maybe of, from even a Christian understanding as well. But the Islamic concept therefore is, get your concept of God right first. Your relationship with God is to worship Him alone, as prescribed by Him. 
Then you enact and you become the best of people. You watch everything you do in accordance with God. So God wants to mold you. But God knows you're not perfect. God knows you're going to make mistakes. But we don't have this odd belief that some bloke has to come and die for your sins. No. If you err, or if you make a mistake, you make sincere repentance to God by saying, Oh God, I've forgiven. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. You're most merciful. God will forgive you. That's the relentless message of the Islamic narrative. If that makes sense to you today, for example, and your kids, for example, are coming and inclined towards their religion and praying five times a day, this should be not alien to you. The fact that you're saying all the time about it because he's on a journey himself. Um, he's changed an awful lot. We were in southeast London and it was nice crime and everything. He's now very peaceful. Like I say, he's not perfect, but he's doing Super. And did you know, I mean, as a as a one who practices Islam, his relationship with you should be so powerful because he knows full well that his hereafter is at stake if he does not serve you. Ah, uh, you know that. Uh, you know all that. So, so in effect, even in the Quranic narrative, Allah says that even if you say a simple exclamation of disdain to your parents. That is serious. So if you if you say, oh, uh, uh, whatever your son's name is, would you mind saying? So do you want to go down to the shop and give me a bottle of milk? Oh, mom. Even that is this that is frowned upon considerably. It's really good for me and our relationship together because it's improved it a lot. Yes. He has to... now it's not it's not just about me and what I say. It's his own personal journey with God and him learning more and more each day. He has like online mosques. Excellent. So you know he has that tuition every week. And actually his best friend who is a Christian and a Christian household watching Zayn and spending time with him was actually converted recently because of Zayn. So and this is now teaching him what Fanta he knows. And I'll tell you something now, this is a phenomenon taking place which is incredible. You're fortunate to have first-hand witness of this, yeah. but Islam is spreading exponentially. We're like witnesses to because we do this type of work and it really is resonating with the public because despite that fact that we are living in relatively affluent societies where we don't have the worry of dying of lack of hunger or food but we still got emptiness and that emptiness is a lack of communication lack of understanding of our creator allah says in the quran you will never try find true contentment lest it be in his remembrance this is why the most people today who commit suicide are multi-millionaires like bankers or whatever in the city why do they do it? Because there's no fulfillment. So hence, that is the Islamic concept of fitra. Fitra means an inclination towards your creator. And like we're all going to... Fitra, yeah, fitra, yeah. Fantastic, you know your stuff well. So what it is now for you, perhaps, observing your sons, an inclination that you are now investigating further. And obviously, we're all getting older day by day. So hence, if something's making sense, if you think, you know what? There's nothing within that in that religion which I could disagree with. Every argument is coherent, it's sound. My sons are bettering themselves as a result of their actions. I used to be the same, but I used to read a lot of science behind this long book when the children were little and I found that side fascinating. Interesting. You know. Yeah. So hence correct me if I'm wrong, but I get the impression I get the that that yeah, I get the impression that you're somewhat akin towards it. You're, you're rather, you're feeling yeah, close towards it. I mean, it. I don't really relate to the Christian religion. It's always felt a bit, it's not right for me. Yes. I, don't know. I mean, the very base that, I mean, and the very issue of that is that if you can make creation to the Creator, that in itself will not resonate within your heart. So, when that does not resonate, everything else which materializes as a result will not make sense. But the Islamic narrative is beautiful. An, un, an unseen being who's beyond the universe, who's created the universe, who cannot be like anything within the universe. It's not His Majesty that He comes as a man. Even the, even the world scriptures, all the world scriptures, it testifies that God is not a man. It's, we, we see that in the, in the Bible as well. God, yet we know Jesus came as a man. So let's just push those. So why does Islam resonate? Why is it ubiquitous amongst people, a black person? A, 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 a brown person, a white person, all coming under that banner of one God 
and we all should come together and Islam then gives you the best concept of how to live your life. This is what God requires of you. If it makes sense, there's nothing stopping you becoming Muslim today. There's nothing you can say to me now, having been, you know, knowing Islam very well, that will stop you becoming Muslim today. There's nothing. Do you feel compelled towards that? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more that I want to learn about myself, and I think it's about me being in the right place. Um, you see, we commonly hear. says that's shaitan that's telling me yeah. that. Yeah, so what it is, sometimes what this is an understanding that if something makes sense, if there's nothing within what you're experiencing that could give you any uncertainty. There is, I mean, I need to understand more about the treatment of women. Fantastic, um, so. You know, and what. No, this is the kind of thing that I'm not sure about. Like, fire away because, because a lot of the, like you say, everyone now is joining, like joining and becoming like a Muslim. Yeah. For me, to walk into a mosque would be completely alien. So that no, so, side so, of yeah. it, I just I no. You can You can. Let me explain to you. In Islam, there's a concept that a male-female relationship or a communion between them is the sanctity of your partner, your husband, or your close relatives. They are known as your mehrams, those you can associate closely with. So they are the only ones who can have close relationship with you in, 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 in a general manner. That's not to say you can't speak to anyone, but it has to be in a particular manner, you see. So we know in societies today, what happens? You go down to the pub, have a few drinks, bloke sitting next to you, you like that bloke, next thing off, you're off and doing whatever you need to do. There's no, that, there isn't that level of coherency. So Islam teaches, not the like, total and utter separation of the sexes, but it does certainly teach that if you're within an environment where you could be really affected, then you have to have that, uh, that element of, um, uh, of uh, being away from potential scenarios. Now, if, in terms of, a, in terms of um, going to the mosque, there are sisters' entrances in mosques. You're free to go with them. That's no issue whatsoever. I, I don't know why, what, what that understanding was that you can't enter a mosque. You can go. Sisters frequently do go mosque. So that, let's just get that out of the way. Secondly, your point about the treatment of women. Now, what in particular do you, are you uncertain of? I think, I think, I think it doesn't say three. in my mind, like a lot, a lot of trouble comes from the interpretation God has the best to speak the Quran and Islam. Yeah. A lot of the time, it's not necessarily like if you go back to like the 70s in Egypt, people were dressed normally, and, and then it's kind of gone the other way. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the times it can be someone's interpretation that they're putting on to other, like, teaching others. And it's, you know, sometimes I think that's where a lot of uh, confusion comes to maybe. So essentially we then go to the, the formative primary narratives. We go to the Quran, we go to the extra uh, uh, Islamic narrative, the Hadiths, which appropriate what the consensus would be. So for example, women are supposed to cover themselves. But that is not what you call alien to other religions. Did you know here in the UK, if you were going to travel from Stratford, just say, to Plasto, and this was all forest going back 160 years ago, as an example, the women would be covered from so you couldn't even see their face. You can see this in historical writings. Women will be wearing the full burqa, fully covered. Now, does that mean that you are necessitated to do as such? In the Quranic narrative, it's ordered upon you that the believing women must put their outer garments over. Hence, that modest aspect must be there. So if one wants to go a step further by veiling, by, that's for you me to do. But is that a curtailment of women? It's a it's subjugation, it's rather because we, we are in societies which can be rather what you call decadent in terms of, you know, the, the push to sexualize the women, for example. We see how young people nowadays, it means it's a bizarre situation. So, you know, that for, so yeah. But does that mean it's some sort of curtailment? Why can't blokes just keep their eyes down? Yes, you can keep your eyes down. The Quran actually teaches that the old believing man lower your gaze. Keep your eyes down. Yeah, you know, yeah. So that is something which is also mentioned in the New Testament as well. And I'd just like to mention that, not that we are accentuating the New Testament, but rather giving you a narrative where even Christ says, pluck out the lustful eye. 
so what, so what, what we eventually, what we're trying to show is that that compatibility between man and woman is not the subjugation of one over the other. They are, they are the same. In the eyes of God, they're the same, but they have different roles that they need to play. And that's fundamental. That does that mean a bloke comes home and says, right, I've been working all day. I put his feet. I take my shoes off. I will have my grab and bring it here. No. I'm quite traditional though as well. So you okay. know, I kind of enjoy that role. In oh, that's lovely. I mean, if you think you enjoy that role and your husband appreciates you and if he's really kind to you, then takes you out for a nice meal of an evening or takes you the family out, that is how nuclear family living together in the auspices of God's commandment. Because women have tremendous rights in Islam. I mean, if you don't, you're, you're, you're well versed, so you know that the time of the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, when he came to that pagan Arab community, when a, when a girl was born, she was being buried alive just for being a girl. And look, he resisted that. And made enemies of his own family, was was shunned away, was thrown pelted by rocks. What for? When they promised to listen, go away from that message you're preaching. We will give you everything you want. We'll make you the king of the castle. You name it, you have it. He refused. He said, "If you put the sun in my right hand and the moon, I will not desist from my message." So, in Islam, women have got the rights to inheritance, rights to divorce. So many aspects are there. Whereas in this, going back a generation here in the 18th century, the French Catholic Church were even debating whether a woman had a soul. Islam has elevated them. For example, look at it, check this out. In, a, in, in, in marriage, the husband goes out to work. Just say you've got an online business at home, selling whatever product, and you do well, you're making good money. Every single penny you earn, the man has got no say to that whatsoever. It's his responsibility to do all the expenditure. You can just sit back, chill and take what, what is yours. Why? That would, if you were to look at it in some totality, by some standards, you would assume, oh, this is discriminatory towards men. But no, this is God's will. Man, it's your responsibility, not hers. You see what I mean? So, in actual effects, they are complementary relationships to each other. You know, extend that the woman does not have to even, you know, cook for her husband if he does not wish to. You're so we must not remember one thing. It's absolutely crucial and incumbent upon us. We must never allow cultural abnormalities to usurp religious edicts. But Islam is exemplified. It's the most appealing. Now, in this country, for example, from some estimates, out of the now, from every four converts, three are women. Why? Despite this image that it's a religion which curtails, which suppresses, which subjugates? No. It's a religion which honors, exemplifies, propels the woman. If practiced according to the tenets as shown by the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace. So hence, it, it's a, it, it is the most serene religion. It's the most ubiquitous in that sense. So please, I mean, in terms of these questions that you have for women, there is nothing that you can possibly ask where there will not be an excellent, fundamental, coherent understanding. Those who implement Islam, practice it in their, in their lives, it will be bliss. I mean, I guess another question to me is, like, what, what if I believe well, it's just me, as I am right now, it's just me. It's just changing my clothes, or necessarily, like my son praying five times a day. What if it's just a belief for now? Okay, no, because you know why it's, why it's more than a belief? First of all, it resonates perfectly with a creator. So let's get that straight. So Islam's got the best understanding of a creator, number one. Number two, the method in which you live, the daily prayers, the giving your charity. You know, I do that, I do the charity. Fantastic. Fasting Ramadan, why do you think we fast for? I know there's a, there's, a, there's a scientific process behind it in terms of what it does to the body. Um, I guess it's also about um, abstaining from lots of different things um, to make you more focused, to make you think a lot more. Um, Excellent responses. Yeah. So what we say, this essentially is twofold. The number one is to understand those less fortunate than you, what you have they don't have they can't afford to even open their fasts yeah. you know they're, they're dying of hunger or whatever the case may be number two it's not the hunger that god craves but by you fasting which is the outward expression of what one requires to do 
internally it must affect you as well. So now, by having that period of reflection during the month of Ramadan, does that better you as an individual? Do you desist now from your usual engagements, which would be, uh, seem to be somewhat um, disinclined? Do you stop backbiting? Do you stop turning a few porkies? Do you stop doing certain acts which God does not like of individuals? I'm supposed to. I mean, I just bought my son to do his part. Yes. And I said to him, I'd probably do it with him next time. I got yes. him, I got him. Um, really, just yeah. support him, but also just my body. Mm. In, terms of, in terms of a phase, you see, it's not a phase. This is a way of, Islam is a way of life. Like we pray five times a day, when the time of the prayer is approaching, we're all laughing, oh, prayer time, we've got to do it. So it's, and what's the purpose of it? You're glorifying your God, your creator, and that creator then wants you to say, okay, you've glorified me, now I'm going to make sure you, you, you listen to what I have to say and implement that in your life. So, like it's with your son, he's got to give you the, the type of respect which is bordering on reverence to you. Yeah. That is, there's no, yes, but you'll have to incorporate it, you see. And now, in the age of reading and information and technology, we can implement that, you see. You know, very, very careful what you say around you, always looking after their needs, giving them love, affection. And I've, and I've relentlessly used the parental term because it's crucial that one gives that. As a, in these societies, what happens? Your parents get in old age, all right, off you go, old people's home, I'll visit you. Come on. In the Islamic environment, I couldn't imagine, you know, like he not. Just lost his nanny. Well, the boys just lost their nanny. Yeah, couple of days ago. Head married to the masjid at six. That's fine. Um, but he's loving being in Kenya at the moment because he's got the you know, the the zan like, yes. outside. Yes. Okay. He loves it. Fantastic, and I'm sure, but akin for yourself, you see. Why we like to just let one please help yourself in the meantime? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where are everything in this? In fact, let's give you a pack. Everything is within this pack. Okay, I'm, yeah. I mean, I've got. I just got an English Quran uh, about a month ago. From here or? No, oh, from, from another, elsewhere. Uh, in Peckham, oh, super. Peckham. Okay, so again, as I've spoken for a long time, I don't want to keep unnecessarily, but I would hasten for you not to find any reasons to desist. Like he's saying it's shaitan, but it may be something that you want to feel you know i think i need to be ready mentally to yeah. go ahead but what i would say to that is if everything makes perfect and coherent sense then there shouldn't be any good forthcoming reason for you to de hence reject the understanding of what is prevailing for you so i would then encourage you to say okay what does the islamic narrative require of you if you become a muslim do you have to dress straight up with a burqa and a chip take that slowly that's not your prevailing issue the prevailing thing would be accepting there's only one god God sends messengers, of which the final message of Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. Then implementing your prayers, getting that closeness to God as your sons are doing as well. This will be the fundamental prerequisite of what you should be concentrating on initially. The other things will become factorial over a period of time. And no one's going to say, right, off you go, off, off down to the burqa shop and dress yourself up. Like, no, take your time in everything. There's no, it's like eating a nice cake. If you gobble the cake up in one minute, what are you going to do? It's going to puke it all out. Have it a tender bit, a little bit of a time, learn it, implement it. But okay. the fundamental, because Talk I think problem, you believe as a Muslim already. Yeah. If you become Muslim, all you're testifying is something that I'm not instilling in you, but rather it's your own belief. One God, God sends messengers. The final message of Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, a universal message for all of mankind. Worship God and God alone. And that is something which I would invite you to accept. And then everything else in addition to that, you can learn at your own pace and with your sons. And then if you want to learn within a sisterly community, that can be arranged as well. We've got, we got people, we've got contacts with sisters who offer this type of help. Yeah, so it's beautiful in this, in this particular way, you see. And you will see that the life will become pleasurable and life will become um, one of, you know, well, this was the way, why couldn't we have had this right at the beginning? But Allah sends that guidance to whomever He wills, whenever He wills. Hence, I invite you to become Muslim. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Really nice. We're delighted. Um, please do come by again if you so wish. Um, this conversation has been recorded by a variety of YouTube channels. One is um, Sam Dawa, um, and one is referred to as Dawa to Soul. Uh, uh, so S-A-M and the Dawa is spelled D-A-W-A-H which means invitation and there are other channels which will be sending this out I have a perhaps a reflection of what we've spoken about some of the yeah let me write it down for you good idea
Uh, pen? Uh, anyone got a pen? Oh, I do actually. Oh, fabulous. Thank you so much. One See how well we're organised. We don't even have a pen. We've got tons of literature, but not one pen. I actually put it in my bag today. I thought I might need it. Okay, there you go. Sign for you, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just like that. Where shall I write it? Let me just. Uh, uh, have you got one of those leaflets, perhaps? Uh, one of my leaflets. Perhaps, uh, yes. Uh, or a piece of better, see, a piece of paper? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. it's a receipt. Is that okay? That's happening. No, absolutely. That's right. A bit of free advertising for Sainsbury's as well. <laughs> Buy one, get two free. She does all this, but she hasn't had it. Yeah, Ash Yeah! <laughs> okay. Hi, hi. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry, don't put that. So, are you travelling a lot, just doing uh, these things in a lot of different towns? We have, I mean, we were in Oxford the other day, uh, okay. on, on, his, uh, on his last Sunday. But usually we're like East London area because we're located here. But yeah, I mean, I've been lots of different places. So yeah, trying to put a message about, but the craving from the public. I was outside Leighton Oriole football ground just before kickoff. They had a three o'clock match this afternoon. I was here at two o'clock. Excellent reception I got from the Leighton Orient supporters. Taking literature, reading. Oh, what? I was there last week. I read that. They've become familiar with me. I even heard one place here every week. So excellent. They've been very receptive, which is what, not what you perhaps expect during football matches where people are a bit more volatile, yeah. so having a bit one too many. But it's been fabulous in that regard. Yes. It's nice to hear. We think it's around six o'clock. We don't know, so two brothers have gone over. They're going to phone us. But whoever's gone over, they're going to stay over. So these are the three main channels which you can just type into YouTube. You can type into YouTube, that's your pen as well. Do I want to take one of there? So I expect that, well, it depends. Any idea, brother, when you can get it up? She, the, the sister's very eager. To, I've explained that the, they've been recorded on the channels. She wants, she wants to get an idea when you will upload them. Maybe next week. Okay. And that's very kind of you. I appreciate your kindness. Please do in, subscribe to those channels straight away as the um, video is uploaded. You'll be notified, and then you can watch it and really concentrate on it. If you want to pass, think you know what he said made sense. Yeah. Just go for it. We're here every Saturdays, two thirty onwards. You'll be very welcome. Delighted like to speak to you. Sorry if I've gone on relentlessly. What's your plus today? But those are the three main channels there. Delighted like to speak to you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Come a delightful conversation with a lady whose three sons um, are now trying to implement Islam much more. The father is in um, East Africa currently, I think, from what, the, uh, what she said. So hopefully, inshallah, she will reflect upon the uh, conversation that we have. And um, you know, may Allah guide her, inshallah. Jazakallah.